Hello everyone this is Void Spirit. I'm here to bring you guys amazing fanfiction that you will surely enjoy. But before we start please subscribe and like the video for more amazing content. CH40. The seven archangels Sariel had just become an archangel and no one understood a thing. Not only that but she said she was created by Veldanava. This was very strange because these were things that existed only in Rimuru's world. In addition few people knew the name of God and so Rimuru was shocked. Sariel San. Could you explain it to me better? Yes, Rimuru Sama. My memories are coming back and I think the memories of the other seven will come back quickly. Meanwhile. Ha ha ha. Sariel was interrupted by a loud laugh. It was an evil laugh with a masculine tone. This was not a time to laugh so everyone was confused and looked in the direction of the laughter. There was Metatron laughing out loud. You. It was you, wasn't it? Now I remember. Sariel spoke angrily. Metatron stopped laughing and said. It was obviously me. Why? It's obvious isn't it? You bastards left me out so I was going to rule all of you, but even after I erased your memories and took away your powers you still chose her as your leader. Metatron said and pointed at Lucifer. All the other seven were also regaining their memories and couldn't say anything as they were immersed in thought. Chloe was at the front of the group as she thought a fight would happen. You bastard. Sariel was very angry. Metatron just smiled and said. I thought that being the first, you would make me your leader. Yet even though I am the one who guided you, even though I am the one who taught you everything you know, you still chose Lucifer. Everyone, including Veldanava agreed that she would be better than you. Fuck Veldanava. I did everything to rule you. I trapped you here and even sealed your angelic forms so your memories wouldn't come back, do you know how hard that was? Sariel couldn't take it anymore and attacked him. Her bracelets glowed and a white double-edged sword appeared in her hand. She attacked Metatron with a vertical strike. As Sariel came to attack, Metatron began to change. His hair grew, his beard disappeared, and armor covered him. He also drew a large blue sword and four wings appeared on his back. He raised his hand toward Sariel and King of Purity Metatron. Zuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
An orb that glowed light blue appeared in Metatron's hand. He raised the orb upwards and said. Veldanova gave this to Lucifer in case a very strong enemy appeared. I took it after I erased his memories. Good thing I kept it. The orb glowed brightly and Metatron said, Mythological prison. The orb released a bright blue energy and all energy went towards Rimuru. Warning. Powerful energy coming. Rimuru realized that this would be dangerous because of Ciel's reaction. He used several absolute barriers, but the energy just ignored the barriers and continued. Tisk. Rimuru clicked his tongue and swerved. The energy followed him at high speed and Rimuru realized he was going to get caught. So he used his ability that he had analyzed from Chloe, King of Spacetime Yog Sototh, but the energy kept moving towards him. Metatron, Chloe and the Seven could move with time stopped, but Rimuru's group could not. Metatron and Sariel were fighting while Chloe protected the others. Meanwhile the blue energy only got faster and followed Rimuru even with time stopped. It was expected from something created by Veldanava. Rimuru tried to escape with every method he could, but he couldn't. Boom a bang resounded and a transparent barrier formed around Rimuru. This prison had been created by Veldanava and was not going to be broken easily. So Rimuru used thought acceleration. Seal San, is there any way to undo this barrier? If I use Void God as Adoth I can, but it will take a while. In that time the seven could end up dying, right? By my calculations the chances are low. When they wake up, the master can name them even from inside the barrier. Then they will defeat Metatron together and can take out their anger for losing their memories. That would be a good revenge for them, but what if they took a long time to wake up? Then I will release the seal and the master will free himself on the spot. Yes. We can always release the seal. Wouldn't it be better to release it now just to make sure? I don't think so. If the master released his other abilities, in his own words, it would be too easy. I don't think the master should depend on his sealed abilities if he doesn't want to go back to the boredom he was living. The seal was to block Rimuru's most powerful abilities. These abilities were even too convenient, and it was these abilities that made Rimuru bored in the other world and even develop depression. Seal who suggested that Rimuru should seal these abilities if he wanted to live a less monotonous life. Rimuru is always trusted seal and accepted. Rimuru almost released the seal several times. Like the time Hajime fell into the abyss, he would also release it if the light of life exploded and the reapers died. Fine. Let's not release the seal and let's follow Seal San's plan then. Yes. Then the master can live a good life with me. What? I said the master can live a good life with me. Rimuru felt that there was some bracketing in CL's speech, but thought it best to ignore it. He deactivated thought acceleration and said to Sariel. Sariel San. Hold him until I can destroy that barrier. Yes, Rimuru Sama. Sariel agreed and continued to fight Metatron. Rimuru wanted to ask why, Sama, but thought it best to leave it for later. Tchin the weapons of the two clashed and Sariel was forced back by Metatron's strength. Metatron raised his hand slightly. Covenant King Uriel. A barrier formed around Metatron. Sariel widened her eyes and looked at Uriel who was still slumped on the ground. She then looked at Metatron cautiously. How did you do that? That's not your ability. Haha. <laughs> That's more of a gift. I got some of your skills. By Metatron's words. One of the gods had gifted him with power to copy or steal some of the Archangel's abilities. It looks like you couldn't copy my ability, am I right? Uh. How do you know that? Sariel said in an arrogant tone and Metatron was confused. Sariel shortened the distance between the two. If you knew my ability, you wouldn't have used that barrier. King of Hope Sariel. She drove her double sword into the barrier that was supposed to be unbreakable and broke it. Metatron was surprised and tried to back away, but received the attack anyway. K.H. He received a wound on his shoulder and backed away. Rimuru and Chloe knew what this ability was. That's because Chloe also had this skill, Hope King Sariel, which was a very varied skill, but its main function was, absolute separation, that surpassed logic. It was used for difficult situations such as cutting through an absolute barrier. If it wasn't for Gabriel's ability you could have killed me. Looks like I'm going to have to take things seriously. Metatron said this and took out another large black colored sword. Seal analyzed it and told Rimuru that this energy was demonic energy. Die. He spoke up and went off on Sariel. T-H-C-I-N-T-C-H-I-N. 
The two exchanged blows and Sariel seemed at a disadvantage. As they exchanged blows Metatron looked more and more hateful. At this moment Gabriel woke up. What's going on? He asked half drowsy. He saw the fight going on and saw Rimuru trapped. You were Gabriel. Just as Seal said. The others were waking up and Rimuru named Gabriel the same time he woke up. Boom a bang resounded and a cocoon of black energy formed around Gabriel. Gabriel was regaining his angelic form and the cocoon fell apart. Gabriel gained black and red wings, his hair turned black and his clothes red. Metatron. Gabriel remembered and looked in the direction of the fight. Sariel was half injured, but still standing. Metatron was with only a small wound on his shoulder. Finally. Sariel spoke as she saw him, but Metatron strangely did not seem concerned about Gabriel's awakening. Gabriel took two black karambit in his hands and set off on Metatron. You bastard. The knives glowed white and let out two beams of light. T-S-U-U-U-U. Metatron fought back with his supreme skill and the side of the room Gabriel was in began to freeze with the beam. This was probably the king of patience Gabriel's skill that Belzard also had. This skill had ice powers and greatly increased the user's defense. Gabriel, Gabriel, you cannot defeat me. I have your ability. Maybe not, but we both can. As he spoke, Sariel attacked Metatron with his spear at high speed. However Metatron just smiled and kicked her. Ah. She was about to be hit, but Gabriel stopped in front of her and made an ice barrier. At this moment they heard a voice, you are Raphael. Boom Rimuru named the newly awakened Raphael and a great golden energy began to pour out of him. He regained his angelic form and his appearance and clothes changed. His wings and clothes were golden and he had two swords, one golden and one silver. Metatron, you have become powerful. Raphael did not attack like the others, he stood watching Metatron as if analyzing him. Oh. The analyst has woken up. Let's see what you are capable of now. Metatron said and took off on Raphael flying with his two swords, but Gabriel and Sariel got in front of him. This made Metatron back off a bit. Raphael, what do we do? Sariel asked and stood on guard for Metatron who was coming. Hold him while I speed up Lucifer's awakening. Yes. The two agreed to Raphael's orders. Rimuru was confused of why they obeyed and even respected Raphael who previously had the most pitiful personality among the seven. Raphael San seems more respectable, or even, more dignified. This is probably because of his supreme ability. If we follow the pattern he should have the King of Wisdom Raphael, skill from which I originate. Ah, I get it. Rimuru understood what seal meant. This skill was great at analysis and formulating strategies. So if Raphael had it, he would be a great leader in battle. Give up and die. Metatron spoke and threw his swords into the air. The swords turned into magical energy and went towards him. The energy merged with him and two of his wings began to pluck. When the feathers fell off there was only a black wing reminiscent of gargoyles. His armor also turned gray and one of his eyes turned white. In addition half of his hair turned red. That's demonic energy. Raphael confirmed Sariel's guess and Gabriel was dumbfounded. But he's an angel. How can he merge with that energy? Gabriel asked for an explanation as angels and demons were complete opposites. Not only that, but demons had a natural advantage to angels and so their energy was deadly to them. Gabriel only knew of one person who could fuse the two energies and Metatron was not her. Raphael then spoke up. Metatron, stop. If you continue this you will die. Even if you stay alive, you'll go crazy. You can't be like her. Raphael had hoped that Metatron still had salvation and was willing to let go of his resentment over Metatron stealing his memories, but it was already too late for Metatron. I can't be like her. Of course I can. No. I'm even better than her. If you don't see that, just die. Metatron seemed obsessed, and both his tone and expression showed it. He made a silver blade of light in his right hand and attacked Gabriel. Kawa. Gabriel was speared away with a large horizontal cut on his belly, he hit the wall and spat blood. Metatron then moved in on Sariel and gave a vertical slash. Tchin Sariel used his supreme ability and fought back with his spear, but to no avail. Metatron used King of Purity on Sariel with his other hand and she was thrown backwards by the sword. Metatron was leaving to deliver the final blow. Chloe who until now was protecting Hajime and the others who couldn't move, but she was going to interfere so as not to let Sariel die, 
Raphael who was trying to wake Lucifer was also about to interfere, but both they and Metatron stopped moving when they heard. You were Michael. Another bang rang out and so did a flash. The Archangel Michael had awakened. That's enough Metatron. Michael also changed greatly in appearance. His armor turned into a bronze color with gold and he also had two swords. Miguel went flying towards Metatron slowly, his swords were floating around him, but he did not use them, Miguel just said. Regalia Dominion. Uh. Metatron fell to the ground on his knees. He had his hands on his head as if he was in pain in his brain. This was the skill King of Justice Michael, or Michael in other languages. One of the uses of this skill was to control any user using angelic series skills. That won't work. Metatron gave an angry scream and the demonic energy corrupted him further. His other wings turned black and lost their feathers as well. The rest of his golden hair turned black and his other eye turned white as well. He won the fight against the domain. How is this possible? Only the seven primordial angels should be able to resist that. He's using demonic energy. Miguel was startled and Raphael explained it. Miguel then attacked with his two floating swords at the same time. Asterisk palm the swords hit the absolute barrier. Metatron went up to Miugal and gave him a powerful punch. Miguel let out a groan of pain and was thrown far and s hit the wall. I'm going to use the army. Miguel, you can't, time stands still. Miguel was going to use his King of Justice ability to summon the angel army, but Raphael warned him that time stood still and it wouldn't work. Actually it wouldn't work even if time was normal. That's because the army was decimated by Rimuru and the other demon lords some years ago. The four prepared to fight and a voice was heard, you are Lucifer. Asterisk boom Rimuru named the newly awakened Lucifer and the bang that was heard was much bigger than the others. Metatron looked at the red mana cocoon with an obsessed face and the archangels looked on as if it was their salvation. The cocoon stopped glowing and Metatron. Lucifer. The two looked at each other with hatred. Lucifer's appearance had also changed, but not so much. Her hair and clothes remained the same, but her skin was no longer pale, her staff now looked more like a spear, and she also had a crown. In addition she had six red wings and emanated an overwhelming pressure. You can't beat me. You can't copy my skills. Ha ha ha, die. Lucifer's supreme ability was King Proud Lucifer, who copied abilities that the user saw, but Metatron seemed to have a way to block it now. So he was confident of killing Lucifer and immediately attacked with a troubled look on his face. King of Purity Metatron, Poison King Samael. Metatron attacked and Lucifer launched two black orbs that turned into tentacles. These tentacles fought off Metatron's attack and he approached Lucifer. Bow to me or die. 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 Metatron was obsessed and the demonic energy consumed him even more making his skin red. He tried several physical attacks on Lucifer, but. You are still naive. Coo. Metatron was thrown far away like an insect and hit the wall hard. He got a surprised and confused look on his face. How did you? Metatron. Lucifer quickly approached Metatron and lifted him up his neck. Metatron tried to struggle, but couldn't get free. Lucifer looked at him with contempt and continued speaking. There is one of my abilities that you don't know about. What? Prideful King Lucifer. You see, one of the peculiarities of this ability is that the angrier I am, the more powerful I get. That. Rimuru knew that ability. The demon lord Guy Crimson had it, and this skill mixed the skills, prideful King Lucifer, and wrathful King Satanel. Lucifer threw Metatron an angry look that made him shiver. Now imagine how much anger I am feeling after centuries of me and those I am supposed to protect being brainwashed. Can you imagine? Metatron could not answer as he was too scared to do so. Even though he was insane, Metatron was still afraid of death. No need to imagine, since you will feel it in your skin, Lord of Light Samael. No. Lucifer's eyes and wings glowed with a beautiful red light and Lucifer took out all his anger on Metatron. Wah. Metatron gave a horrifying screech. His wings shattered and his body glowed as if it was about to explode. After a while Metatron stopped glowing and fell to the ground in agony. His skin and hair returned to normal. This was because the demonic energy was destroyed by the ability Lucifer used. No. I can't lose. I will rule. Lucifer will bow to me. She deserves it. She took Samael. I am better than her. He was saying this with his voice agonizing. He was obsessed. Lucifer was about to deliver the final blow, 
But a voice interrupted it. Let me do it. It's my job. Everyone looked in the direction of the voice. Azrael. Lucifer muttered. There was Azrael who had just awakened. Beside him were Uriel who had also awakened and Rimuru who had freed himself. Azrael's appearance had changed greatly. His clothes had become white with gold and his scythe had become a sword. The only thing that didn't change was that his face was still covered. Uriel changed a lot too. His skin now had a tan tone and his hair was dark brown. Her armor was a bronze color and she still had a shield. In addition she had two blue angel wings and eyes of the same color. Azrael approached her and said, I am the archangel of death. Let me do it. Lucifer nodded in agreement and Azrael drew his sword. Metatron realized that he was about to die and said, You can't kill me. If you do, the prison will be broken, and they will escape. I did that as a guarantee. Uh. Metatron spoke with difficulty and the seven were surprised at his words. This was because they knew who Metatron was referring to. Azrael looked at Lucifer with a questioning look as if to say, should I kill him or not? Lucifer approached Metatron and stepped on his face, this causes Metatron to let out a groan of pain. Ah! If you did that you really have gone crazy, but you know. I'd rather those six get free than leave you alive. She removed her foot and nodded to Azrael. Azrael raised his sword slightly and said. I never thought you would succumb this much. I never thought the day would come when I would kill you, King of Death Azrael. A black sphere the size of a marble appeared at the tip of his sword. The sphere went toward Metatron. No, 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 no. Metatron went into despair and tried to run away, but the sphere caught up with him. Metatron's body glowed faintly and disappeared. Even his soul was destroyed without a trace, so he certainly would not be reincarnated. Everyone seemed relieved that it was over. Lucifer, Michael, Azrael, Uriel, Gabriel, Sariel, and Raphael collected their wings and put away their weapons. Then they turned to Rimuru. Eh? Rimuru was confused. They knelt down and declared in unison. Rimuru Sama, the seven archangels of will are at your disposal. What? In another dimension, in hell. An infinite abyss. That was the description of this place. An abyss that you couldn't see the end of surrounded by the most hideous and powerful creatures in hell. Even the demons dare not approach this place because of the danger. Another reason why demons do not approach this place is because its leaders, the primordials forbid and kill anyone who disobeys. In addition, talking about this place is considered taboo. Few know, but if you go to the bottom of this abyss, you will find a gigantic glowing cube. The glow from this cube is so strong that it would reach an ordinary human. The cube has many circles and magic chains with powerful sealing spells. But today, prick cracked the cube cracked. It cracked several times until it broke and the sound was deafening. When the cube opened, six shadows emerged from inside. Oh? Why is this happening? I don't know, but I liked it. I thought I could rest here a little longer. Yawn. Shut up Belphegor. Now we can loot everything. Shut up you guys. We have a visitor. Warming up. What did you say? The six men were arguing, but the visitor interrupted them. It was a man with blue clothes and hair. Let me introduce myself. I am Velda and I would like your services. In return I could help you get revenge. Velda spoke in a direct tone. The six men looked at each other and one of them said. How did you find us, and how did you free us? About that, Metatron is dead and how he was keeping much of this barrier. I was able to break it. They were thoughtful and one of them said. Metatron is dead. I wish I had done that. How jealous. By the way, did you say something about revenge? I would like to hear more about that. Yes. If you help me I can help you get revenge. On the seven archangels and the seven demons of the progenitor colors. What do you think? In my opinion, we would gain a lot from it. One of the men asked and they replied, I think it's a good idea Mamam. For me we would stay here and sleep, but there is nothing to do. Two of them agreed and the others were thoughtful. The man called Mamam turned to the others and said. Come on people. Even Asmodeus and Belphegor agreed. Sathanal, don't you want revenge? Huh? Yes, I really want to kill that Lucifer traitor. Let's accept. There were only two more to accept and Mamam said. You know Belzebuth. Our enemies must have acquired some interesting powers in that time. Wouldn't it be fun to devour them? Huh. Let's accept. 
Belzebuth excitedly agreed and there was only one left. However Mamom didn't need to say anything to that one. All of you are going to accept. Then I'll go too. If I'm the only one who doesn't take revenge, I'll explode with envy. Good for you, Leviathan. No fight then. Mamom smiled and turned to Velda. We the sinful kings accept your proposal. CH 41, saving the angels. Time got moving again and Hajime and the others started moving again. Eh? They were confused as the seven mortals were kneeling before Rimuru and Metatron was gone. Rimuru. Huh. Yes. Rimuru was surprised to be called by you. You was casting a look saying, explain. Rimuru was kind of startled by that look and turned to the archangels. Guys, I want to know why you take me as your master, but first how about we all sit down to talk? They all agreed and went into the conference room. First they explained what happened when time was standing still to Hajime and the girls. The group was quite surprised by everything that happened without time even passing. After explaining, Rimuru asked the archangels, by the way, why did you take me as your master? He asked confused and Lucifer stood up to answer. That's because since Veldanov's disappearance we haven't found anyone we thought worthy of being our leader, but now we have. It's you. She said and the others nodded. Yet Rimuru and his group were confused. Am I worthy? Rimuru spoke confused and Lucifer answered once again. Yes. If it were not for you, we would never have regained our memories and would be under the control of the gods. But wasn't Lucifer San the leader? Rimuru not understanding why people commonly taking him as master was indignant. Hajime and the others were reveling in seeing him like this and were holding back six laughs. I am the one who commands them but I don't mind following Rimuru-sama, who is our savior. The others also agree. The others agreed and Sariel stood up to speak. We have no problem following Rimuru-sama. She spoke happily and the others agreed. Rimuru couldn't take it anymore and gave up. Rimuru decided to clarify a few things. So what is your relationship with Veldanava? Hajime and the group members who had heard about Veldanava for the first time were confused and Rimuru explained them. They were surprised to learn that this was God. The Archangels answered Rimuru's question. All the angels were created by Veldanava a very long time ago. After creation, some angels developed will on their own, and Veldanava was so happy to see his creations evolve on their own that he gave their names to the abilities he created, as a form of homage. Seven of these angels were Seraphim, the strongest class of angels. These seven were named by Veldanava as the seven Archangels of Will and they would become the leaders of any angel who developed will. Verdanova named the archangel Samael as the leader of the seven and no one objected. When Sariel who was telling the story came to this part of the story, Rimuru asked a question. Sariel san Rimuru sama Now that you are our master you don't have to be so polite to me. Sariel interrupted Rimuru and he was a bit confused by her words. She didn't seem to like being treated so politely, so Rimuru changed her way of calling. Sariel Chan, I know three seraphims who developed wool, but did not become archangels. Instead they became fallen. Can you explain to me why? Yes. That was probably Metatron's doing. He probably thought it would be difficult to erase the memories of seraphim and that's why he didn't bring them into this world like the others. Sariel explained to Rimuru that the emergence happened when the angels developed a will. From their Metatron would bring them to this world and erase their memories. However we no longer have a connection to heaven. The method Metatron used to bring them here is unknown, and the gate to heaven that Michael could open is unusable. We don't know why, but it must have something to do with the angels stopping appearing. Sariel said. Rimuru knew why the gate was unusable. The reason was that it was already open somewhere else, and that place was Rimuru's world. Milam had created his new kingdom in the sky and the gate was the only entrance that was always open. Ah. Rimuru realized something. The reason the reapers stopped appearing was because all the angels were annihilated in the great war against Velda. There was no way the angels could develop will if they were dead. Rimuru told everyone about the death of the angels and about the gate to heaven. Everyone was thoughtful and some of the archangels had pained expressions. So Veldanava had a daughter? I think he would like her to command heaven. Me too. That's true. I hope I can meet her someday. They seemed happy to know that Veldanava's daughter ruled the heaven. None of them seemed to have a grudge against Rimuru over the death of the angels. Let me continue the story then. Sariel continued to tell about the Archangels of Will. Besides the Seraphim, 
They had some angels who developed will at almost the same time and gained abilities with their names. After a time of training, the angels developed their abilities and became powerful. Veldanava decided that she would no longer give orders to the angels who had will and told them to do whatever they wanted, but Samael was very close to Veldanava and said he wanted to stay by her side. Since Samael was the leader, all the angels made the same decision as she did. After a while, Samael saw how Veldanava admired humans and decided to protect them, so the angels decided to look for things that threatened the humans and they found something. The demon kings of the seven deadly sins, Lucifer, Satanel, Belphegor, Belzebuth, Mammon, Leviathan and Asmodeus. Like everything else they were created by Veldanava. Veldanava created them to bring balance. Unlike the kind archangels, the kings were pure evil. In addition to the sinful kings, Veldanava there is also seven other demons to bring balance the only difference is that those seven are not created by Veldanava but they are born due to the great spirits of darkness. The shadows of the seven primordial angels, the seven demons of the progenitor colors. When the archangels found out about all these powerful demons, they decided to investigate the situation in hell further and when they did. War. Sariel stated heavily and continued to explain. Hell was at war. On one side the seven sinful kings and on the other side the seven progenitors. Both sides had armies of demons and were fighting for something. The gate to hell. This gate would allow passage to cardinal world and the progenitors were blocking the passage. The reason the progenitors blocked the passage was because the kings wanted to destroy and dominate the humans. Just as Sariel explained that the sinful kings were the total opposite of the seven archangels of will who wanted to protect humans. Both the kings and their servants were evil. If one of the kings got a demon, that demon as well as the king would follow their respective sin. X. Demons spawned by the king of wrath would be furious. These demons could possess humans temporarily and would spread chaos on the world, however the angels would stop them. The reason the progenitors were blocking the passage to the cardinal world was because they did not want the world to be destroyed. The progenitors were different from the kings and were not evil by nature. They were born to be the opposite of the seven primordial angels, who were neither good nor evil. The primordial angels just followed Veldanava's orders. The only peculiarity of the demons mentioned by the progenitors was that they all loved to fight. These demons could not possess human bodies and could only remain on earth if they gained bodies. The progenitors were protecting the harbors in a war, but this war was at a stalemate. The progenitors at that time were weaker than the kings because of the supreme abilities of the Sin series, but the kings were not united in the war and so no one was winning. The angels decided that the seven kings were a threat and wanted to eliminate them. Samael asked Veldanava to do this, but he said he would not eliminate his own creations. However he also said that he would not stop the archangels from taking any action. Samael decided to do nothing and just observe the war. But after a while they received some news. Mamom had united six of the kings and the progenitors were losing. Upon hearing this, the archangels decided to act. The seven archangels attacked the six who were united with full power. But we lost. Sariel spoke wistfully and the other archangels had sad expressions, Rimuru was confused. But you had the numerical advantage, right? How did you lose? Rimuru was confused and Sariel explained. Yes we had the advantage in numbers. Our forces were also on par with the kings, but we didn't win because of natural advantage and fighting method. Demons have a natural advantage against angels and not only that, but the kings played dirty. They sacrificed their subordinates and used them in the middle of the battle. We had no way to fight them and were almost killed. We managed to escape because of Samael's, Lord of Light, ability which was very effective on demons. Sa, Sariel San. May I ask something? Rimuru said after hearing Sariel's answer. Sariel already imagined Rimuru's question and nodded. What happened to this Samael? Rimuru asked and the rest of the group also cast questioning glances. They didn't know anyone by that name so he asked. Sariel smiled and pointed to Lucifer. He's over there. Eh? Hey, then why do they call you Lucifer? He asked confused and Sariel calmed him down with a, we'll get to that, and then continued. After the defeat, the archangels decided to join the progenitors to defeat the kings. They didn't hate the progenitors and had nothing against them, so they decided that. Besides they didn't think they could defeat the kings alone. However, even this alliance was not enough, for the kings would not be killed easily. 
The kings, like the progenitors were reborn after death and simply killing them would not solve it. So even though they had enough battle power to kill them, they didn't have enough power to seal them. But then we got another help. From Lucifer. Sariel said and continued the story. Lucifer of pride was the one sinner who did not want to destroy or dominate mankind. Besides she was too proud to join someone else and so she did not fight together with the other kings. However Lucifer was not dumb. She knew that she could not against all the kings alone and so she decided to join the angels, but on one condition. Their leader Samael had to beat her in a duel. Samael managed to win and they united, but the problem still remained. There was not enough power to seal the kings, for there was no way angels and demons could join forces in one prison, this was because their energies were opposite. So how did you guys win? You who love to know more about the world and its knives asked anxiously, Sariel said. We needed someone who could control both demonic energy and angelic energy. Since we had no one, we decided to create someone. Everyone was confused by Sariel's words, but Rimuru understood and said. Demonic fusion. Sariel agreed. Rimuru knew this technique as it was used by Leon's soldiers in the battle against Yuki. This technique fused demons and humans, but Rimuru didn't think it would work on angels. The only problem with this technique was that one of the people doing the fusion would cease to exist. At this point Lucifer took over and continued to tell the story. Lucifer and Samael would merge into one not knowing if it would work since a merger of angels and demons had never been done, but neither would allow themselves to lose. The merger took three days but it worked. This merger was different from the mergers with humans. Instead of one of the consciousnesses disappearing, they merged into a new person. That was the beginning of Metatron's hatred for me. The pure and glorious Samael that he idolized had changed by merging with a foul demon. Or at least that's how he thought. Lucifer said and got an angry expression as he remembered Metatron. Yet Veldanava found our fusion somewhat amazing. He said I had the deepest light and the deepest darkness at the same time. That is why he did not take away my position as one of the Archangels. To answer your question Rimuru-sama. The reason they call me Lucifer is that the proud side of me does not allow them to call me Samael. But the new me brought good things like. Lucifer if from Raphael and kissed him. After that she sat on his lap and said. Like my feelings for Raphael. Lucy. Raphael was happy with her words and hugged her waist. Everyone looked at this scene with kind eyes and Sariel continued the story. Lucifer before the merger possessed the skill, proud King Lucifer, and Samael possessed, Lord of Light Samael, but after the merger she gained a new demonic skill called, Poison King Samael, and a new angelic skill called, Fallen King Lucifer. Obviously she became more powerful from this and they went into battle with the sinful kings. They won, but it was not easy. They even tried, but they didn't get help from the Sedefim who would only serve Veldanava. However they used the army of angels controlled by Michael and the other angels who developed a will also went to battle. The price for sealing the kings was paid by both the angels and the progenitors. The progenitors previously had the strength of an awakened demon lord, but sacrificed much of their power in battle. The angels did not sacrifice power, but several of them were injured. So they decided to go to another world for a while to recover. They all vowed never to talk about the kings and to let them be forgotten in their prison in the abyss of hell. Today the only ones who know about it besides the angels with a will are the progenitors and the oldest demons who are called prehistoric. After that Veldanava disappeared and Metatron took advantage that the Archangels were injured to steal their memories and then you already know. Sariel said and they were all with thoughtful expressions as they processed the information they received. Their reactions were normal since they had just heard the story of what could be considered a holy war. Rimuru seemed to remember something and said. Hey Sariel. So when Metatron said, they will break free, he was talking about the. Rimuru asked and the girls in the group got frightened looks on their faces as this meant that those powerful and evil beings had returned. But Sariel confirmed their fears. Yes it's from the sinful kings. Metatron helped seal the kings and if he had help from someone powerful, I think he could free them. The gods must have someone like that, since they gave Metatron all that strength. Everyone got worried looks on their faces and she raised her hand to speak. Saw. Sariel San. Wouldn't it have been better to leave him alive then? She asked in a shy tone. Shia was a little shy about talking to the Archangels now that she knew how powerful they were and also that they served God himself with a capital, G. 
Raphael had stopped flirting with Lucifer and answered in Sariel's place. No, that would have brought even more trouble. Luce's choice was the best. Metatron was really mad and probably would have let them go even if he stayed alive. Raphael's argument was solid and no one refuted it. Lucifer after regaining her memories seemed not to mind being called by an affectionate nickname and said nothing. She just continued hugging his neck. However we have no way of knowing if what he said is true. Miguel added and Gabriel said, it is true. If we had any connection to that world we could feel the prison, but since we don't, we will have to leave everything to the progenitors. However they won't be able to do much. They lost much of their strength in the battle. Ah, about that. Rimuru was still thinking about the story. He now understood why none of his demon subordinates would not tell him about it. It was because they needed to hide about the existence of the kings. Rimuru explained to them that the primordials had evolved and now could probably fight the kings, but that the black, white, yellow and purple primordials probably wouldn't do anything because Rimuru told them to protect the city in his absence. Rimuru was worried about these kings and was wondering if he should release the seal and end the adventure in this world. His mind was conflicted and that's when he felt someone squeeze his hand. Uh. Chloe. No need to worry. Just Guy San alone is enough to beat them on his own. Chloe realized that Rimuru was thinking about regaining his powers and reassured him as she knew how much he didn't want that. You were right. Thank you. You're. You're welcome. Rimuru stroked Chloe's cheeks and she turned red. Rimuru knew very well how strong Guy was. He had a superior skill that was a great advantage and by CL's calculations, he could beat even the seven archangels in a fight. Rimuru was happy with Chloe caring about him and continued to hold his hand. The seven were surprised at how strong the primordials had become, especially Guy. At this moment, Tum the ground shook and a loud noise resounded. Everyone was surprised and walked out of the building. Seal San, what's going on? Rimuru asked Seal in his mind. The light of life is about to explode. The explosion must have been anticipated by Metatron before his death. What? But then the Reapers will die. Rimuru had not named the other Reapers yet, and if the light of life exploded, they would die. Master, calm down. We need to name the Reapers before we disconnect the light of life from them. However, now we need to stay close to the light of life to make sure it doesn't explode. Furthermore, I have detected an army coming from the east. Probably at the behest of the gods. How are we going to solve all this at the same time? I have a plan. Seal seemed strangely excited about the plan. Seal told Rimuru to first go to the light of life and Rimuru turned off the thought acceleration. Guys the light of life is going to explode and there is an army coming this way. I need you to destroy the army. Rimuru spoke and the archangels agreed. He then turned to his group. I need someone to gather the reapers, can I ask for your help? Yes. You don't even have to ask. Sure. Let's go save the town. Everyone easily agreed and went to help gather the reapers. Rimuru then headed toward the light of life. When he arrived, the light was collapsing. It was blinking hard and kept failing as if it was malfunctioning. Okay Seal San, I need to name the reapers, so what's your plan? That one. As soon as he heard Ciel's excited voice, Rimuru felt something coming out of his infinite space. When he looked back he saw a beautiful young Japanese woman with black hair and white clothes. Rimuru knew very well who this young woman was. Rimuru had a few flashbacks. Shizu. Dot San. No master, it's me. The voice that came out of Shizu was different and when Shizu looked at him his eyes were red. It's Seal San. Rimuru was even more surprised. Seal, Shizu smiled and said. I will stabilize the light of life and meanwhile the master appoints the reapers, how about it? After they are all named I can cut the connection. Rimuru didn't say anything, he just stared at Seal. Master. Air. Seal San, I think it's a good plan, but I have a question first. Why did you have to assume the form of Shizu San? Seal called out to him and Rimuru asked a question. There were several forms that Seal could have assumed, but he decided to assume Shizu's right away. Yes. I thought this form would please the master. I can change it if you want, but I think it's better to stabilize the life light first. Yes. All right, I'll be going then. Rimuru spread his wings and flew toward the lake. Seal approached the light of life and placed her hand on it. Then she murmured. I hope the master doesn't remember that we could have stopped time. 
As Rimuru named the reapers, the archangels flew out to meet the army. There they are. Lucifer muttered and pointed. Several women with gray hair and wings coming toward them. They knew them very well. It was these women who had stopped the rebels a few years ago. Around a thousand? Do they think we are weakened? Probably. If it weren't for Rimuru Sama's appointment, we might be. Raphael confirmed Gabriel's theory. Sariel then said. So, which one of us is going to deal with them? Everyone looked at each other and Lucifer said. You can leave it to me. This way it will be faster. Everyone agreed and went back to the city. Lucifer flew close to the army. When one of the apostles saw her. Die in the name of our Lord. Plaf the apostle attacked, but was torn apart before she got close. Several others tried, but they ended up the same way. Lucifer snorted and said. Those who survive this can face me. Poison King Samael. Lucifer took out his staff and it glowed. Then the staff released several black spheres that turned into tentacles that looked like they were made of tar. All the apostles died before Lucifer's strength. Looks like someone still wants to play. The bodies of the apostles were already gone and there was only one man in armor left where there used to be an army. The man had heavy silver armor that covered his entire body. Lucifer flew at him with his six wings. The man looked angry at having his army crushed. Lucifer then said. Are you sure you want to keep fighting? You are in a terrible state. His armor had several dents or missing parts, he was also panting. The man said. Arrogant insect. Perish by the will of the Lord. He attacked Lucifer with all his might, but Lucifer only delivered a spinning kick that knocked his head off. His body fell dead to the ground and Lucifer returned to the city. Rimuru had just appointed the last angel. All the appointed angels gained white wings and were given varying skin and hair colors. The archangels returned and said that the enemy was weak. This relieved Rimuru and after that they all went to the light of life to disconnect it from the angels. When they got there, Rimuru realized that he had forgotten to tell them something. He only remembered when. Shizu Sensei. Chloe gave an excited shout upon seeing her former teacher. The others were confused by the woman who looked remarkably similar to Rimuru. When Chloe screamed Seal turned around and said. I'm sorry Chloe, I'm not Shizu, it's just a misunderstanding. What the? Rimuru approached with a guilty expression and put his hand on Chloe's shoulder. Chloe. This is Seal San. Ah. Chloe understood what happened and became despondent. Rimuru held her hand and explained to the others who Seal was. After his explanation everyone was surprised to learn that Seal was a consciousness that came from an ability. Especially Raphael who had this ability. As he explained, Seal disconnected the light from the life of the angels and stored it in infinite space. Seal then approached and greeted the others. So. What are you guys going to do now? Rimuru asked what the angels would do now that they were saved. We will do whatever you want. Sariel said. Rimuru remembered that he had been taken as master and got a tired expression. He realized that he would really have to rule the angels and said. Since it is like this. I would like you guys to wait until I have a way to get back to my world. It's going to be awkward hanging out with a lot of people. I also think it's better that you guys go somewhere else. Because here the gods can attack at any time. I think we all agree on that. But there is something I want to do before that, Rimuru Sama. Lucifer had just arrived and said her request. Now that she had recovered her memories, Lucifer knew the ritual for reviving the Reapers. So she wanted to look for the orbs of those who died. Including Abaddon who they discovered was just being controlled by Metatron. Rimuru thought for a while and said, Seal San, can we do something about this? Rimuru asked Seal beside him. Seal seemed anxious about something and was surprised to be called by Rimuru. Huh. Yes, it does. Lucifer, Michael, give me your hands. The two held hands with Seal and Seal pulled something out of infinite space. The light of life? Rimuru was confused and asked. Seal nodded his head. The light of life has strong connection with all reapers. If I sacrifice it, I can locate even the orbs of reapers around the world. I can also cast a long distance ritual and use Michael's regalia dominion to summon them here. Seal explained and everyone was impressed. Lucifer then asked. But won't they assume monstrous forms? How will they understand orders like that? Seal nodded and said. The master can appoint them from a distance if he uses the life-light connection. Then they would fly back here. That day moved the world. 
On that day several lights came down from the sky and caused angels to be born in various places. It was a day when EHT communicated with the world. Or at least that is how it became known. And that day will also be the birth of a legion that will be known as the White Numbers. In a place known as the spiritual realm, a place where only spirit can enter, but except for Veldanava, stands eight lights that seems to be talking to each other. It seems the seven kings had been free, said by the red light. Yes, I seem so, said by the green light, should we interfere? Said by the white light, no, the seven progenitors are enough to eliminate those foolish kings, said by the black light, ah, yes, those seven are more stronger than they used to be, not to mention the existence of those twelve. Replayed by the green light all eight light just agreed not interfere for it doesn't require their assistant and it will not bring chaos to the entire reality.